All right. What's up, YouTube? Everybody hop in here. Big day. I promise you I'd give you a live show if everything became official today. And I almost just cursed. GD it. It did. It did. We have four new uh, Big 12 members. Welcome. Let me be the first to welcome you. UCF, Cincinnati, BYU, and Houston. I'm now at the point where I think I can consistently rattle off all four of those without forgetting one of them, uh, which is – that is progress, people, because I can't tell you how many times I get stuck on one. And it's a different one every time. It's a different one every time. But now I'm going to have to uh, make sure that I'm on top of all of that. So uh, please get in the chat. Let it rip. Your questions and comments, I'm here for all of it. I sat through four Zoom press conferences today, count them four, uh, about like two and a half hours worth of listening to – Bob Bowlesby, different university officials, athletic directors, et cetera, all give their same pitches. I, I could pretty much recite by heart the uh, pre-canned, like, Bob Bowlesby news and notes. Um, and, and really, actually, the one that was more formulaic was the uh, chancellor at Texas Tech. And I'm, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name because I know I would botch it. Uh, Tech fans that are in here, you guys can probably help me with that. And I saw that even the way his name was being pronounced by some people on these actual um, – like Zoom press conferences, they were pronouncing his name wrong anyway. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, I, I'm not going to try to botch that. What am I saying? So, Travis, Kurt, you see KUAD already complaining on Twitter via Jesse Newell. I did not see that. Let me go see here. I've already been reading enough of some of the Kansas stuff here with them still trying to flirt with the uh, with the Big Ten. So, this, uh, okay, Jesse Newell covers – KU for the uh, Kansas City Star. He says, KUAD Travis Goff asked if this would close the door on potentially doing something different conference-wise ahead. Quote, two months ago, nobody knew what was happening. So for us, it's all about what we know. And what we know is we've got to get better in a variety of fashions. Uh, more on KUAD Goff. We have the most potential, I think. I'm biased, but I think as much or more potential as any other A5 Power 5 athletics program in the country. So that's where we're focused. Um Asked KUAD Travis Goff if today's Big 12 news potentially stops other conversations while pursuing what's best for KU. No. The beauty of it is when you think about being focused on what's best for Kansas, that applies to anything we do. All right, great. Well, now we see where uh, – we, we definitely see where the Mike Vernons of the world on Twitter get some of this. Uh, that's how Kansas is going to feel. They're still going to try and get into the Big 10. They're still going to continue to be the uh, – I mean, look, the, the analogy for Kansas here is they are – I always want to say construction workers, but I don't want to throw construction workers onto the bus like this, right? Because that's a stereotype. But they are the guy that's like on the corner of the street, lewdly whistling at the uh, female that's walking by who's paying no attention and just trying to throw themselves as much as they can at the uh, at the Big Ten. So you know what? I, I actually do give Travis Goff some credit there for making a public statement because we haven't really seen that uh, put out there on Twitter, but... I know that's not what everybody is here for to hear me complain about Kansas. So we can move on and uh, focus more broadly. But uh, I guess that does bring up an interesting talking point there that Kansas is not going to uh, go quietly into the night with this new look Big 12. Um, maybe Kansas is just a little scared of this new basketball conference. You know, I mean, look, you're adding in um, you're adding in Cincinnati. You're adding in a Final Four program, a team that actually made the Final Four last year uh, in Houston. So, like, I, I don't know. Maybe that maybe Bill Self's a little scared. I might be a little scared if I were Bill Self, too, of this uh, basketball conference and what it's going to look like coming up here. So, you know, thank you for alerting me to that, Travis. Maybe that's maybe that's the real issue here. Um, keep the chat coming if you want to uh, donate or make sure that your uh, comment, your question or comment gets to the top for me to see. Uh, you can click the donate button. It is under the chat box where it says say something. Um, please feel free to do that. And I will roll through what uh, the main news and notes are here that you need to know from the press conferences today. Um, so the first first things first, I suppose we'll start with when everybody is coming, because that's been one of the big questions, right? Like when, when will this actually happen? When will teams be in the Big 12? BYU is coming in 2023. I mean, really what we know is like what was reported the whole time seems to be pretty accurate here, which is that 2023 is the real target date. Um, so BYU will be coming in 2023. They don't have the strings attached that the AAC schools do, obviously. Um, so that didn't surprise me. You know, I'd seen some of the chatter of like, could BYU even do 2022? And it seemed like based on their um, schedule that they have coming up next year, they just scheduled Notre Dame, for instance, at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. I didn't think that was really super likely to happen. Um, 
So BYU will be coming in 2023. And the rest, here's the wording from Bob Bowlesby on the AAC schools. He said the rest would come no later than July 1st of 2024, which that that's going to be your 27-month mark, right, where the AAC requires 27 months and $10 million to get out from under the deal and get to a new conference. But in saying that, like, Bowlesby was definitely – given all the follow-up of like, look, that's that's just kind of – I'm basically what he's saying is that's what we have to say now. I think they're clearly going to be working toward um, trying to get out sooner. And, boy, UCF, like from watching UCF's press conference, you know that they are working toward that, and they're doing it immediately because they've already said that um, – they've already said that they are um, taking out a line of credit from the university, the athletic department is – taking out a line of credit from the university to try and fund whatever it's going to take. And then they also, I thought this was pretty clever, unveiled a marketing campaign today where they're asking for $12 a month from um, donors, fans, alums, whatever, $12 a month for the next year, 12 for 12. There was some catchy like marketing to that where it's like, hey, obviously we're going to the big 12, donate $12 a month to help us get there. So UCF's all in, man. I got to say, I really appreciate the, uh, the energy from UCF. Like they're, 100% all in. Uh, shout out to Hello Farm Life for the donation there. Much appreciated. Um, thanks for being here. I think that's your name, right? Like that's your name. That's not a, a comment. I think I have that right. Um, shout out to you for the donation and thanks for thanks for hanging out here in the chat. Um, so yeah, uh, it looks like the target date is going to be 2023 for everybody. I would still, if you put a gun to my head right now, I would still guess that you're going to find that everybody winds up in the league in 2023. Um, I think usually there's a way that these things happen. And a lot of this too is just based on what I've just the way the, in, I would say the industry expectation right now seems to be that they would get that done by 2023. Like when you just see it said by enough people who are really, really sourced up in the game, like I do tend to believe that that will happen. So I think that's where we're headed. It's just going to take some time and some maneuvering and uh, most importantly, some money. Uh, you're going to have to pay some money to get out early there. So, uh, keep the questions and comments coming. I'll work through this. Let me say that I I enjoyed like all the press conferences. I didn't catch as much of uh, Cincinnati as I probably did the others, but that's because it was at 3.30 and I go on the air live at 4, so I was trying to get my show ready to go. But I can say out of the other ones, my, my favorite energy that I picked up on by far was UCF. No offense to everybody else, but man, like UCF is chomping at the bit. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm forgetting the athletic director's name. But, dude, the AD, the AD uh, at UCF came up, like, yelling up to the podium, like, shouting at people to be excited and, and get on their feet. You know, I was like, dude, I, I enjoy I appreciate this man's energy. And I appreciate the fact that, like, the first thing that was said at that press conference, again, was like, hey, we've got a line of credit coming to try and make sure we get into the league. And, like, I say that half jokingly, like, I, I do appreciate it. It was kind of funny. But at the same time, like, that's the attitude that you need to have. And if you're a – if you're a member of the Big 12 right now, you should be excited about that because the whole play here is back to that analogy of athletes. You're going and getting the best athletes that were available to try and um, try and prop them up and try and get their potential to be fully realized. You want somebody that's going to be committed and all in to doing whatever it is that they can. Now, at the same time, do I think that that means that there's a risk like 10 years down the road, UCF ascends to the point where they would then leave you for some other league? Yes, absolutely. Like that's the energy that UCF has. But I mean, if you're the big 12, you don't have any other option, um, but to just ride that lightning, ride that UCF lightning, baby for right now. Like I'm seeing Zeus assassin. I see there in the chat uh, saying UCF is going to rise very quick through the big 12 conference champs in the first five years. I think it's possible. Uh, why not? I mean, they've been to three new year, six games since 2013, right? Like 100% that's possible. That's better than anybody else that's that's left in the league. Anybody not named Oklahoma in the Big 12. And that, that includes you, Texas. That includes you. UCF has been much more of a national player than Texas has. All right, I've got a couple of questions in here uh, with the donation. If you want to donate, uh, just click the dollar sign below the chat box and you can get your question or comment up to the top. So hello, Farm Life. I see you in there again. Thank you very much uh, for the donation. Really appreciate it. He asks... I shouldn't assume he. Hello, Farm Life asks, do you think that some of the Orphan 8 still have members that might jump? Big 10 ACC. Yeah, well, if you caught the beginning of the chat, uh, you just heard me reading Jesse Newell's uh, tweets, who covers KU for the Kansas City Star. Um, Travis Goff, their athletic director, has come out today 
and is trying to appease the masses there in Lawrence by um, basically still leaving the door open for them to try and jump somewhere else, which they think would be the the Big Ten or the ACC. I know that, like West Virginia, I saw – who was it? It was Andy Staples, I think, was the National College Football Reporter that I saw talking and speculating about West Virginia today. Um, but he was, again, reiterating the same point. Like if West Virginia added legitimate value to the ACC, why would it have not happened already? Um, so that continues to be the talking point there. And I know there are some West Virginia fans and folks that I follow, like, you know, the dude of West Virginia, for instance, I see him all the time um, really trying to make the case and break it down financially as to how it could still work or that it would be at least uh, a push for the ACC to add West Virginia. I'm sure they'll still be looking for that. I haven't seen a public statement. Maybe I missed it today, but I haven't seen a public statement from West Virginia about all this. And I think that, you know, it was like Kansas didn't come out with a public statement. There was no uh, tweets, any kind of social media, like welcoming the new schools to the Big 12. I think that is telling. I think there are still some schools that obviously aren't over the moon uh, about the new look Big 12 because they still want better options. I would just continue to say I don't I don't think it's likely that they find another home, at least until another domino falls in conference realignment. So I'm still in the mode where I don't see that happening, but I that does not mean schools will not try. Schools will absolutely, absolutely try. All right, so Anthony, shout out to my man Anthony, who hops in here with a donation and a question. Uh, Anthony, thoughts on USC with Oregon, Colorado, Washington to the Big Ten with the Pac-12 backfill with Big 12 teams. So that's that's the scenario that, you know, going back a couple of weeks was talked about, I think, a lot more. Right now, the look, we're going to get into the alliance and gentlemen's agreements and how much you believe people – and take people at their word. But they have said in that alliance, basically, like we're done poaching each other. So you would think that that's not going to happen anytime soon. But I think it's always a possibility. And I think the Pac-12 is beholden to USC the same way that the Big 12 has been beholden to Texas and Oklahoma for a long time. So USC decides they want to jump. There's not much that the Pac-12 can really do. Um, so I, I do think that remains a possibility. I just wouldn't expect it anytime soon. I, I think at least... At the very least, with that Alliance press conference, there will be a bit of a cooling off period here on realignment now. I would imagine, especially now that the Big 12 is added to, you're going to see things smooth out for a little while and just calm down for a little while. But I wouldn't put it totally out of the question. And would the Pac-12 backfill with Big 12 teams? At that point, I don't know. I mean, if the Pac-12 lost USC, Oregon, Colorado, and Washington, losing USC, Oregon, and Washington, whew, I mean – that's a tough blow. Like, I don't know how you really survive that if you're the Pac-12. And I don't know, at that point, are Big 12 teams willing to to go? Depending on when this happens, that to me raises a lot of questions. I don't I don't know that that becomes a more financially viable option than the Big 12 at that point in time. Um, so we'll see. It's a good question, Anthony. I just, I don't know that we'll have any concrete answers. And I don't think you'll, I, long story short, I don't think you'll see it anytime soon. But that is a scenario to keep in mind for sure. Um. And I know Colorado is always like the 14 thrown in that. I, Colorado to the, the Big Ten just seems like a weird, weird fit to me. Um, but look, I mean, fit. We're, we're beyond the point of fit being the be-all, end-all in conference realignment. I'm, I'm not naive to that fact either. And on finances, um, I think Anthony, and again, appreciate the donation and the question there. If you want to donate and get your question up to the top, just click the uh, dollar sign below the say something box there. Um, and you can do that here throughout the chat. On the financial front, Bob Bowlesby did get asked point blank about, hey, like what's what's the TV revenue going to be uh, for the new league? And he gave basically the only answer that you can right now, um, just said it's going to depend, and he's not sure. And his answer was a quick pivot to, we've just done the best, we've done the best that we can to position ourselves if and when that time comes. So, I think that's that's really like the only answer you can give, right? You, you try to control the controllables. I, I'm using a coach speak phrase there, but control the controllables, control everything that you can. And the Big 12 feels like they've done that by adding the four best schools out there. And now you just you just have to go see what happens. Everybody in the chat is telling me that Coastal Carolina just blocked a Kansas punt for a touchdown. That's lovely. So 14 to nine. Wow, KU was up. That game kick at six. I just there's too much going on today, man. I can't keep up with it all. I really can't keep up with it all. Oh, so now it's 21 to nine with a Coastal Carolina block punt for a touchdown. All right. Well, tough blow for the mighty Kansas Jayhawks. Sorry to see that. Sorry to see that. Um, 
a lot of whining going on today. Travis Goff, now Kansas football. Um, we'll see what happens the rest of that game. I will enjoy catching some of that as, as soon as I get done chatting with all you lovely people here. So on the finances, we don't have any real concrete information as far as what they think the TV revenue is going to be. I didn't expect Bullsby to really get into that. He's, he's pretty, he's pretty buttoned up when it comes to that, you know, um, really intelligent, calculated, buttoned up guy. So there wasn't a whole lot there. I can tell you that this actually came from BYU TV. This wasn't in the press conference, but it was an interview that Bullsby did after the BYU press conference. He told them that BYU would get a 50% revenue share for the, the two years that they're in the league on a, the current TV contract. And then once they negotiate the new TV contract, BYU would be a full-fledged member and get 100%. Um, so at least at first, BYU is going to get a 50% share. And like I would imagine... I would imagine that's going to be the case with the AAC teams, assuming that they came in, in 23, right? I, I think you would be on the, the same page with everybody there, 50% share and then get a full share once uh, you get the next TV contract and move in. So um, we'll see. Now, one thing I did appreciate today that I will mention, Bob Bullsby had this like one moment of humanity. And what I mean by that is like getting just a, a peek into the window of like real thoughts and feelings that are out there. And we know that Max Olson reported that um, – that Bullsby was very hurt by Joe Castiglione of Oklahoma um, doing all of this kind of behind his back and that he was a great friend of Castiglione before all this happened. Um, he dropped one line in there at the BYU press conference where he said, um, I, I enjoy working with people that I trust. And I was like, man, Bullsby for like two and a half hours is like on point, on message, buttoned up. And then you get that one little peek into the actual psyche and the real feelings that are there. So I was like, I, I appreciated that moment from Bullsby. And of course, like, you know, of course he's going to feel that way. So I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with some of that coming out now at this point. Like, what are you going to say that's going to make things more awkward between Texas and Oklahoma and the rest of the Big 12 right now for the next couple of years anyway? Like, who cares? Um, everybody has done things that's going to make that relationship awkward. So like, yeah. I'm not too worried about um, any comments that he would make on that front. Robert, shout out for the donation. Uh, Robert donated just a second ago. If you'd like to do so too, just click the dollar sign below the chat box there. I'm going to try and catch up on some of these comments here um, after the KU updates because I did see something. Uh, Jack, Jackie Chen. Jackie Chen. What up, Jackie? Jackie says, why does KU think they're better than everyone in this conference? Well, I've explained this concept before. I just think it's I think it's a lot of earned arrogance in basketball translating to the bigger picture here in conference realignment, which I think is where there is a bit of an impasse between reality and where Kansas fans are at. They have dominated in basketball. They are a national brand. They've certainly earned the arrogance. They won the Big 12, what, 15 years in a row before they were uh, finally dethroned by Bruce Weber and K-State and Chris Beard and Texas Tech. So any fan base that enjoys that level of success is going to get a big head about it. And I, I think the harsh reality has been being met with the reality that basketball is 20% of conference realignment. And that is not enough to earn you a spot somewhere right now when you have to prove your monetary value and your monetary worth. So I think this battle is going to continue. I mean, I've already seen the pivot. Obviously I just read off the comments from Travis Goff, KU's athletic director, where he's opening the door. Um, to, to keeping it open, which by the way, like he has to say, because he's a brand new athletic director and the whole fan base, I can just tell you, I know what the fan base is thinking. The fan base again, thinks that they are better than the rest of the league and that they uh, will be able to find another landing spot. So if you're the AD right now, trying to make your mark, this is obviously like a landmark watershed moment in college athletics. You, you can't really close the door on that and just be happy with what this current big 12 is. So I think it's going to go on. And just with some of the Kansas mouthpieces on Twitter, um, the pivot today has already been like, well, look, the Big 12 said they are not done expanding. So the Big 12 is not done expanding and Kansas is going to keep looking around. Those two things are connected. Big 12 wants to not close the door on expansion because they think KU will still get an invite and leave. That's the pivot. That's the pivot right now. That is definitely the Kansas stance. And that, I think that that's going to be a reality that everybody's going to, to just have to deal with. I, I'd be interested. I don't know. I didn't see any public statements from Oklahoma State yet. I didn't look too hard for that. Uh, if someone has seen one, point it out to me because I would be curious what Oklahoma State is saying because that was the other school we were hearing, you know, just like really fancies itself to have more options eventually down the road. 
Um, so be curious what they have to say. And again, you have both an athletic director and a president at Oklahoma State that are pretty brand new and um, definitely need to make their legacy here on this moment. So I would imagine that they're not shutting any doors right now, too. Uh, Taylor, only worthy expansion candidates are San Diego State and UNLV. I haven't done as much digging into UNLV as I have some of the other candidates here. I do still believe, just based on what I've read and heard, that Boise State and Memphis are probably still at the top of the list. But I, I like San Diego State. I know there's there's some disagreement on that. I like San Diego State a lot. And maybe I'm a little influenced by the fact that I, I just did a radio hit um, with a radio station in uh, San Diego uh, right before I came on this live chat. And they made a pretty compelling case there. They were telling me that I think San Diego State and Boise, since they've been in the, the Mountain West together, the series is like 3-3. Three, three. San Diego is the eighth largest market in the country with no NFL team now all of a sudden. Get into California, new time zone. I see the potential there with San Diego State. I really do. And selfishly, as a media member, I would just love the trips to uh, to San Diego. So I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to it, but I, I don't think it's like a slam dunk. I don't think that's a slam dunk by any stretch of the imagination. UNLV has potential. I don't know. I just don't – I don't know anything about UNLV's football program. I mean, has UNLV done anything to – make you think that they have a football program with real potential. That's my problem there. And I know that the, the priority of the big 12 has been this whole time, just to make sure that they're getting the best football brands possible and creating the best football conference possible. So I, I, I think that's a long shot. And I'm seeing people even say here, who said Rick's Bevo says Nevada is a better option than UNLV. I mean, Nevada is a better football program right now, for sure. You guys have heard me talk about that some here in this chat. Like I'm, very keen on being aware of that because K-State plays Nevada next week. And I, I know how good Carson Strong is, and you're going to be hearing his name shooting up NFL draft boards, I'm sure, before too long. Uh, Hello Farm Life jumps in with another donation. Thank you, Hello Farm Life. Uh, really appreciate it today. A lot of support. Uh, we should add Wichita and Gonzaga as basketball only, then add Boise and Memphis as full members. Can you imagine the basketball? I have seen a lot of people suggesting that, and I, I think that's very interesting and compelling because – especially in the case of Wichita State, they just joined the AAC not that long ago. I was reading about this. Shout out to Taylor Eldridge from the Wichita Eagle who did a really good um, piece about this. And he had some quotes from Mike Oresco that I used in one of my videos this week. Um, but yeah, they just joined the AAC not that long ago. And now it's it's taking a big hit from a basketball perspective in Wichita State. Obviously, they do not have a football program. Um, so basketball is what they care about. That's the moneymaker there. And now they're, they're getting kind of screwed by – losing a lot of the cloud of their basketball league. So I, I don't know what they might be thinking. Um, I don't know what the Big 12 would think about that. And I don't know if the head coach is like, want, do they want the, the basketball league to be even even stronger? Because let's be honest, I mean, the trade right now of uh, bringing in Houston and Cincinnati and, and BYU um, in hoops for Texas and Oklahoma, I think you're, you're, you're getting a little bit stronger. I would argue you're getting slightly stronger in basketball with that. And Bob Bowlesby, I know, certainly would because he was really pushing the basketball point uh, today throughout all those all those press conferences um, and then like Boise and Memphis again for football like I, I'm okay with that I'm okay with that I don't know that they have to rush to do that right this second but I am okay with that I saw Dennis Dodd speculating about whether or not the American would take a run at Boise um, which if I were a Resco and I were the American I definitely would what's the harm in trying I mean you have to shoot your shot and, and try to go big I, I would probably do that if I were them so, uh, yeah, I think it's a good question. I think those are good thoughts. I just – I have not heard any, like, real legitimate buzz about doing the basketball-only thing other than just fans speculating, but I, I see the logic. I understand why it makes sense. Um, so, Renee says KU is in danger of losing their AAU status. I, I have heard some similar things about, like, KU's academics may not be quite where they think that they are, but I'll, I'll be honest, like, I'm not well-versed enough or researched enough and all of that to um, – really speak intelligently on that. And everybody's just going to assume that I'm the, the bitter K-State grad here. So let's see. If you want to donate and make sure your question or comment gets up to the top, it is the dollar sign below the chat box. Uh, who is the new alpha in the conference? Cody asks, who is the new alpha in the conference? Good, good question. <laughs> What's funny is my initial reaction is, I feel like I know who's going to act like the new alpha in the conference. And I think that's going to be UCF. I think that's going to be UCF. Um, just judging by the fans that I have seen on 
social media, judging by the way that they kind of conduct themselves via social media, very brash and aggressive, which again, I think is great and it works and clearly has netted them a lot of success. But I think attitude wise, they're certainly going to act like that. Oklahoma state, I just wonder if they're still going to be like one in, one out, if they're not totally committed to this deal, do they really try to assert themselves as the alpha? And then football, like I think they have the best football brand going right now, but is it getting stale with Mike Gundy? Like it feels like it's been a little bit stalled, a little bit stale. He's had all these flirtations with different jobs like Tennessee over the last five to 10 years. And now this year, I mean, they certainly were not impressive in week one. And I know Spencer Sanders didn't play um, their starting quarterback who was out with with COVID uh, contact tracing. So I'll cut them some slack for that. But, you know, it was a one possession game with Missouri State where they're defending their own goal line late in the game. It just it didn't give me a lot of warm, fuzzy feeling that they were going to take that next step and get back to being like a 10 win program this year. Um, so I don't know. I think that's pretty wide open, honestly. I really do, because if you beyond like UCF, Oklahoma state, like who's next on that pecking order. I don't know. I mean, you're looking at football brands right now, like Iowa state is high up there, but I don't think they have the the clout to really pull off the alpha thing that, that will be, I mean, that is honestly a fascinating question for the years to come. Like how do the dynamics of the new league shake out? And I'm telling you, I would really put my money on UCF coming in and certainly acting like the alpha. We'll see if they can back it up with their on field performance in football. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Brady, shout out to Brady for the donation. Thank you very much, Brady. Says, keep up the great work, bro. Ema, that's every man a wildcat for the uninitiated in there. Uh, you'll hear a lot of K-State fans repeating that mantra. Um, let's see. Troy. Troy says, I have no issue with anyone like KU in the Big 12 who is staying in the Big 12 to have whatever swagger they want. Well earned. Yeah, look, again, like the arrogance and swagger is certainly earned for what they've done in basketball. Um, Ben, will Dana Holgerson ever have a dynasty at Houston? Well, it doesn't seem like Houston fans are very, um, optimistic about that, right? I don't, Houston fans that are here in the chat, maybe you guys can speak to that, but I, I don't sense a ton of optimism about Holgerson. He's seven and 14 now in year three. They just lost to Texas Tech with an awful second half where they were completely outclassed and just shut down. So I don't know, man, that feels like it's moving in a different direction. I like the theory, the last live chat we had where someone was telling me, go get Tom Herman again. I like that Houston theory. I want to see Houston with Tom Herman coming into the Big 12 once again. Um, Brady says the Oklahoma State president complains too much. I've not read like specific comments from the the new president at Oklahoma State, but I I just I look, I know Chad, I'm familiar with Chad Weiberg, who's the athletic director there quite a bit because he was he was at K-State um for a while and has has been around the Big 12 for a long time. I just know that they they definitely want to be aggressive and like Robert Allen, who's a a uh, really tied in media member there in Stillwater. I mean, he's talked about them talking to every single league and being incredibly aggressive about what they're trying to do. So I know that that's the attitude emanating from, from Stillwater right now. So it would not surprise me if, if there have been some pointed comments publicly from the, uh, the president there. Um, Rick Spivo, Pac-12 and Big Ten only accept AAU schools. I think uh, the, the Big Ten certainly is in a position to be choosy about that and only accept AAU schools. I, I don't know that the Pac-12 is really in a position to be that, that choosy about it. We'll see. Um, we'll see. But I, I don't think that they are right now, certainly. Uh, Harold is a Houston alum. We want Holgo gone. Yeah. Yeah, boy, it just – it doesn't feel like things are moving in the right direction from everything I can ascertain. Um, now maybe there's new life if he's going to be able to recruit better in, in Houston now that they have a Power 5 conference logo to put on their jersey. I would imagine that that helps quite a bit, especially now that you have Texas and A&M both in the SEC. That has to make it really hard to recruit the city of Houston if they want anybody like trying to recruit against them. And even then you're talking Tech, TCU, Baylor, the next wave of schools in there, they always had a leg up on you. So, yeah, I, I think that that may help. But does that help in time? Like Holgerson's just going to have to win games now uh, to even get that opportunity. Uh, good question here from Edwina McCulley. Um, did Oklahoma and Texas get a vote in Big 12 expansion for these four schools? I hope not. So the one thing I saw on that was, and I don't remember who it was, but one of the national reporters said that it was the, uh, how did they phrase it? It was like the active members of the Big 12 voted unanimously, and it said all eight. So I'm under the impression that Oklahoma and Texas did not just from the one report that I saw, but I do not know that for sure. 
So I think it was the other schools that got a say in it and not Oklahoma and Texas. But I believe they, they only needed a super majority, which would have been um, 75%. So if you just had eight of the 10, if you had the other eight all on board with this voting, yes, anyway, um, it would not have mattered. But for, for the principle of it, I understand why you would be sitting there saying like Oklahoma and Texas better not have, have actually got a vote. Uh, David says Kirby Hokut said Texas Tech and Texas are planning to play annually as non-con opponents. That'd be cool. I would respect them if if they did that. Um, I would definitely respect them if they did that. And I, I would like look again. I think it's smart because you have the alliance that's going to be scheduling itself. Um, you have the SEC, which is uh, I th- when Texas and Oklahoma come, probably going to be playing like ten conference games just because they have the inventory to do it. And those are going to be better games than anything they could get by going outside of that. So you're going to have to find creative ways to get good non-conference games. That would be one of those ways. So if I were tech, I'd be all over that. I know there's like some sentiment of like, well, screw them. All those teams that are leaving, don't play them. I don't think that's the smart business move. Um, It might be the like the emotional response that most people would want to have, but I, I don't think that's the smart business move there. Rob says, I'm missing KU getting steamrolled. Is it still 21 to 9? Still 21 to 9. KU's got the ball, middle of the second quarter. Okay. Um, <laughs> Rick's telling me UNLV football is crap. UNLV football could play in Allegiant Stadium. Boy, I don't know. Like how many, how many people would actually show up to that? Um, I don't, I don't know that many people would actually show up to that. Uh UNLV is in a growing market from California's leaving the state. Okay. I mean, like I can buy that. And so I'm not opposed to the, to the Las Vegas market. I just don't think it's, I don't know that the infrastructure is there right now to even feel like you could build, build the football program very well. Um, You know, you have to have at least with the schools that have been added, it's like projectable athletes, right? I don't know that that's even a real projectable athlete. Like that's kind of the problem there. I don't know that there's the, Super high upside that you see. Uh, Rob says no to mixed sports schools. Does no one remember what happened to the Big East? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little leery of it, to be honest. Um, and I, I just have not heard any serious entertaining of that thought. But, um, yeah, we'll see. KU, more KU. Um, Pac-12 should go after Boise and Fresno State. I've had some people talk to me about Fresno, too, and – Again, the only thing I really know is just that they, they had a great football program under Pat Hill back when he was there. Whoa. Okay, so here we go. The ears. I assume you're a, a West Virginia fan, right? That has to be for Mountaineers. It says, sad day for the Big 12. Do West Virginia fans, are you feeling like that, that it's a sad day for the Big 12? I, I don't understand. Even if you are Kansas, even if you are Oklahoma State, West Virginia, somebody that fancies themselves to have better options, I don't know why you think it would be a sad day. Because the worst case scenario is that you just got a better fallback option. It, even if you want something better, your 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 number two choice just got better and stronger. So I don't. I, I guess I don't understand that sentiment. If your take is there's too much celebrating this uh, from schools that may not feel like they have any other options, then I can understand that. I can understand you saying that, but I don't think that makes it a sad day. Um, I think it just means the Big 12 strengthened its position. And hey, if something were to come, if the ACC comes around for West Virginia, what, what does it really matter uh, that the Big 12 just added the four teams today? So I don't understand why it would be a sad day. Um, <laughs> I am the bitter K-State grad. Yeah, you're right, man. Very bitter. I'm very bitter watching Kansas uh, cakewalk into the Big 10 right now and dominate Coastal Carolina. Um, I'm very bitter. Very bitter about all the great things happening at Kansas right now. It sucks. It sucks watching uh, Kansas jump to the Big Ten right now. It's been a tough day, you know. Watching um, watching Douglas Gerard and uh, Travis Goff at that Big Ten press conference, fist bumping Kevin Warren. It was really tough to take today. Let me tell you, it was very tough, Big T. So thank you for uh, pointing that out. Samuel, what do you think the Big 12 will do for a TV deal or streaming platform? I mean, that that's the, the tough part. And I know, like, I, I really I want to be very optimistic. We saw the Sikkim 365 report that the TV money may only drop by like five to ten million dollars per school. And even 
Um, the high end of like what we've seen from Dennis Dodd at CBS Sports has been all the way up to 25 million, which would be only about a 15 million drop. The, the tough part is like ESPN and Fox seem like the only real players and, and mainly ESPN because I don't think Fox is wanting to like jump in and be the primary there. It's it's just ESPN. So there's there's not competition and competition would be a good thing for the Big 12 here. CBS is a wild card because they'll, they'll be losing the SEC after next season. So does CBS want to get in the game? That That's something to watch out for. And again, the other the other thing I think that, that could play a role here is um, – uh, lost my train of thought there for a second. Oh, ESPN with ESPN. Do they, if they're really worried about the tortious interference claims from Bob Bowlesby, do they decide to just give a sweetheart of a deal to not deal with that and whatever potential fines in civil court, like whatever it would be that you'd have to pay out and worry about lawyers and just having that as a headache. Maybe they wanted to give a more sweetheart of a deal to the big 12 and Bob Bowlesby has actually leveraged them um, with his claims Keep an eye on that. I, that's not anything that like I've heard substantiated or backed up. That's just me speculating there. But, hey, um, perhaps that's on the table. Uh, Juan, thank you for jumping in, Juan, a Houston fan. Could you talk a bit about what you think the new Big 12 divisions might look like? It's a great question, Juan. Thanks for the donation. And uh, it's a very pertinent question because we we got confirmation basically from Bob Bowlesby that there will be divisions. Um he said more or less they feel like they will have to have divisions because of the fact that at least for a while right now, they're going to have 14 teams unless Texas and Oklahoma leave. Felt like out of necessity, they would probably have to do divisions in a lot of sports, but it, it would likely be different depending on the sport. So it would not be just a flat, we're going to have two divisions for all sports, like football may be different than basketball, which might be different from volleyball, et cetera. Um, I did this the other day. I think, do I still have that sheet of paper where I wrote it out? I had a sheet of paper where I wrote it out in the last live chat. Um, man, I don't, I mean, I think it's, I, I kind of had it broken down like East and West almost, but then I saw, I saw some Texas tech folks that I really like uh, Rob bro. I think is who was talking about this, who does radio in Lubbock. And I, I respect a lot. And he was saying like, well, what's the point of putting all four Texas teams in the same division? Um, so, you know, you had like, KU, K-State, Cincy, West Virginia, Iowa State, one division. I feel like I'm missing one school there. And then like everybody else um, on the western half of that on, on the other side for the other division. But then if you don't split up the Texas schools, you wouldn't be giving as many opportunities for every school to, to play in Texas, which is that's the definite important thing because you want to be there for recruiting purposes. So um, that I think is something to keep in mind. Like there might be some pushback internally about – um, wanting to split the Texas schools up. So I think it's, I think that would still be very much up in the air. And one thing Bullsby did say is that they were all, and this is what I have told you guys before, like I, I don't think they were too concerned about that. It was like, hey, we need to go get these schools, get the big picture taken care of. We'll worry about the details later. And that that is more or less what he said um, is the case with that. He did say that one of the first things they'll take care of is deciding how many conference football games they're going to play. You want to play eight, nine, ten conference football games? What is it that you want to do? Um, that's one of the first things they're going to decide. And, hey, if you feel like you have a good enough product here, again, because of the way everything's going, you, you may want to consider doing ten conference games to not have to schedule as much out of conference just because everybody is going to move to where they're, they're not doing as much of that and the alliance is going to play each other, et cetera, et cetera. Scott, do you do these chats and shows regularly even without expansion? Great content. Thank you. Appreciate that, Scott. I plan to. I certainly plan to. I would love to do it. Um, if the interest is going to be there, I will 100% do it. I've said, like, I, I like these more than just the regular videos on YouTube because I'm a live radio guy. Came up in radio, do a live radio show every day, so I enjoy um, being on live with these. Daniel. Daniel with a donation. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that, man. Been loving the daily content. What's the number one thing holding K-State back from being the Big 12 Conference leader in 3.0? I think it's just um, getting back on their feet football-wise, so to speak. Um, pretty well documented my thoughts on the end of the Bill Snyder regime, but recruiting had dropped even from what it was, which it was never um, gangbusters under Snyder, but it had dropped off. They didn't have a scholarship running back when Chris Kleiman took over, for instance. There were some talent issues. They needed to revamp the roster. I think you're already seeing them getting faster and more athletic, but I, I think Climate just needs time to fully implement that. And last year definitely was a roadblock between COVID and losing Skylar Thompson. Um, 
and having to try and recruit without being able to bring people to campus, which I think the campus always surprises people positively. So that was something they had to work against. I just think they need more time to get their legs under them with all of that. And I, I think that's really it. Like, I think you just, it's, it's all about football and you just have to hope that Kleiman is the right guy to take the next step football wise. And I think the hope there would be like, you could turn into Oklahoma state, like kind of what Mike Gundy's been where you win eight, eight, nine games every single year and can jump up and challenge for the league title every two or three years, something like that. I think that's like the reasonable hope. Now, look, maybe Chris Kleiman is Bill Snyder 2.0 and Bill Snyder at one point in time won 11 games six times in a seven-year span. Um, I don't want to say that I'm trying to like cap the the possibility of that, but I do think that's a that's a tougher ask. Um, so we'll, we'll see, man. I mean, I'm still very optimistic about Kleiman. I still really like the coaching staff. I think they're doing good things. Um, and look, every opportunity will be there to go be the alpha in this new conference. You'll have every shot to do that. It's going to be pretty wide open. Um, so it's a good question, and I appreciate it, Daniel. Uh, look, guys, I'm pretty exhausted today, and I need to go get some dinner. So I'm going to I'm gonna say five more minutes here. I got five more minutes. If you want to make sure your question or comment gets in, um, you can donate by clicking the dollar sign below the chat box. Uh, I'm going to give you about five more minutes here, take a couple more questions, and then uh, skedaddle and go enjoy a Friday night. What's KU score here? Let's check that. Oh, 28 to 15. Man, we got some action. We got some action going on here. Touchdown Hawks. Jason Bean, the quarterback, a 34-yard rushing touchdown, it would appear. All right. Let's go, Hawks. Big day for Kansas. Big day. I know they're all fired up about the new Big 12 and now their football team scoring some tutties. Congratulations to the Jayhawks. Uh, Nanofish42, thank you for the donation. Hey, John, UCF alum here. Excited to join the Big 12. Which team? Um, which team do you support and which team are you most interested in facing? So yeah, Nano Fish, I am a, I cover K-State. I graduated from uh, K-State and who am I most interested in facing now? I, it's a great question. I would, my, my lean is UCF. I'm, I'm just very intrigued by UCF's energy. And this is not just because Nano Fish, you are a UCF alum yourself asking this question. I loved when they did the 2017 national championship thing. I love the social media, like how they conduct themselves and market themselves. I think it, it, the UCF may well turn into the school that everybody kind of like loves to hate in the Big 12 eventually, assuming that they win and continue with that sort of attitude. Um, but right now that makes me very intrigued and, and very interested in playing them. Um, BYU, I mean, I'm also very interested in playing BYU. One, because Provo looks beautiful. The stadium, Lavelle Edwards Stadium, looks beautiful. I'm very interested in, in seeing what that is actually like. And I have these memories of the 1996 Cotton Bowl when K-State played BYU there, too, with Steve Sarkeesian, by the way, as the quarterback. Um, and what was a great game, awkward score, 19-15. to 15. And uh, so I'm, I'm interested in, in playing that game just somewhat because of that, somewhat because of the intrigue of just a national brand and and somewhat because of of the stadium and where it's at and just the new settings, like new settings I'm excited for in the Big 12. But I, I think UCF would be the top of that list. I think they would. Nothing against um, Houston or Cincinnati. I just – the other two were like the top of my expansion list. I thought they made the most sense, and and they're the ones that I think – I know Cincinnati's ranked in the top ten right now, and I, I'm probably just a little bit ignorant there and not knowing as much about the program as I should – um, to me, the other two have a little bit more juice to them in terms of like what I'm excited to see play out. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't think Cincinnati could roll into Manhattan and, and crush K state. I think they could very good team. Uh, so that's, that's no slight there And Houston. I think Houston's a sleeping giant being that, that Houston, the city of Houston is in their backyard. All right. So J and J what's up J and J. Um, I see you out there and I know, I think you DM me J and J. I, I feel like did I forget to respond to you? If I did, just hit me back up. Um, please do. J&J, appreciate the donation. The Pac-12 made a huge mistake by following their Big Ten Rose Bowl. <laughs> okay. All right. Big, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Pac-12 made a huge mistake by following their Big Ten uh, Rose Bowl buddies and not expanding. Now the Big 12 can corner them by taking Boise and San Diego State. I, I mean, that is an interesting element of it, too. That's kind of like the, the Pete Thamel theory, right, of – taking as many teams as you can from the next two conferences just to kneecap them and take their power away. And maybe there is an element of that if you can take teams that would be on the Pac-12's list away from them. 
I, I tend to think there's I, I tend to think there is a chance that the Pac-12 did make a mistake by not expanding. And someone else brought up that USC, Oregon, like Washington doomsday scenario. I think that's absolutely out there and, and possible that that happens to the to the Pac-12 and that they would have made a mistake by not expanding. Uh, my real question there would be like what it's kind of the same formula as the Big 12. Like, what does it mean to USC to expand? Would that make USC happier if they expanded? I just think they have to worry about appeasing USC. Um, and that's really pretty much it. I'm not going to lie, guys. Like, I am exhausted. Uh, I'm at the point right now where, like, my mouth is tired of talking because I've been doing it so much today. Um, but I, I appreciate all you guys a ton that have hopped in here. I just saw Blake. Blake threw in a donation uh, as well. Really appreciate that. And Cody. Cody, I see you. Cody with a donation. Uh, one last one last thing here. Texas Tech fan here. What do you know about the scheduling alliance with the SEC? Uh, the Big 12 is going to need something like this to present to networks. Look, I have not heard any like real serious legitimate talk about uh, scheduling alliance with the SEC yet. I think it would make sense. I think it would make a lot of sense for the Big 12 to do. I think you're right. It would help with TV networks. And um, it, it would also just give you a chance to have more high-profile games because this league is going to need to prove itself. The Big 12 will need to prove itself. And the best way to do that in college football is to go beat the SEC. So as much um, – as much as you can get opportunities to do that, I think it will help. Um, but a good question, Cody. Um, Joe, I'm just going to say, oh, Joe's Taproom. Joe's Taproom. That's what that is. Joe's Taproom, 99. Um, appreciate the donation, Joe. Thank you for hopping in here. I'll get, I'll squeeze this in here for you. Joe, so why not talk about Nebraska? I thought they only left because they were mad at Texas. They don't seem happy up north. Yeah, they definitely were. It was Texas was the issue. I mean, Nebraska was upset with Texas from day one back in 1996 when the league formed. The problem here, Joe, is just the money. Um, I don't think Nebraska is happy. Clearly, they're not very successful, and Texas is gone. But they're also making north of $50 million per year right now in the Big Ten. And the Big 12, we're talking about looking at around 20. I mean, most in the industry would tell you 25. I know the uh, the, the Sikkim 365 report was more optimistic than that. Um, we'll see what it winds up being. But you're, you're talking about at least 15 to $20 million per year difference. Um between what they would make in the Big Ten and what they would make in the Big 12. So, like, that's the problem. It's just financially it would not be viable enough for Nebraska, uh, even if it would be potentially more sensible and potentially they would have more success with their athletic programs in the Big 12, which I think could be possible, um, especially with all the whining they do about that Big Ten schedule. Sheesh. All right. That's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Uh, enjoy your weekends. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy your Friday nights. Um, enjoy some Kansas football baby. Like what, what could be better on a Friday night than enjoying some Kansas football? You guys go watch the Hawks, go watch the Hawks. Uh, I'll try to be back with a live stream on Sunday, um, to get some reaction to what, what happened on the field. And, uh, we'll go from there. Oh, Juan. Thank you, man. Juan, I appreciate it. Shout out for the donation. And, uh, I appreciate that you appreciate the content, my friend. Talk to you guys soon.